Welcome to the webinar, everybody. We'll get started now. I'm Alistair Cole, co-founder of Revenue Coach and your host for this afternoon session. Revenue Coach is a platform of sales technology products that create sustainable performance in sales while also delivering rapid results. We recently created four times higher win rates for technology clients while reducing sales stress by 24% and tripling the levels of happiness for their sales reps. This is the first in a new series of webinars where we're exploring some of the current challenges in the workplace, especially for sales professionals. Today's topic is overcoming rejection and reducing sales stress. And rejection is one of the most common negative emotions we experience in daily life. And it's happened to everyone who's worked in sales and probably every other job function as well. Um, uh, I'm delighted to say that we've got uh, Larry Steibel with us today, uh, who is a licensed doctoral level psychologist from Harvard and a world leading expert in rejection. So Larry is also the president and co-founder of a global career management and leadership development firm, Steibel Peabody Associates Incorporated. Um, he's an entrepreneur in residence at a private equity firm and has been writing regular columns in psychology today since 2011. I reckon, Larry. So thank you very much for joining us. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Alistair. Um, now, I'm excited to hear from you about, you know, why rejection happens to us, how it affects us, and, and crucially, what we can do to build resilience and overcome it. Um, and uh, I want to just take a couple of minutes to uh, learn about you as a human being for our, our, our audience. And I've got sure. five, I've got start of, I've got rapid fire questions, start of a 10. Um, the first one is what's the, what's the worst job you've ever had? Oh, the, oh, absolutely. The, <laughs> <laughs> the worst job I ever had, I was in high school and uh, I lived in New York City and I had an opportunity to uh, work for the New York Yankees at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx yeah. and to be a hot dog vendor. And uh, you'd think that would be a really cool job. The problem is, is when you're up in the grandstands, the, 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 the stairs are very narrow and you've got, a, you have a, you've got a tray of very hot hot dogs in steaming water. And if I, f if I missed a step and fell, <laughs> I would get burnt. That was the worst job I had. Okay. But it That's... was great for my, you know, it was great conversation piece that I was well, part sure. of the New York Yankees. Yeah, amazing. Um, what's, what's your ultimate sandwich? My ultimate sandwich. Uh, again, being from New York City, it would be a kosher hot dog with mustard and sauerkraut. What's the one thing you own that you should really throw out? Um, right next to me is a big jar of jelly beans. Okay. And um, I should be throwing those out. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, scare, the scariest animal on the planet? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I, uh, in my town, hi, uh, uh, there, 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 there's, there's something good. They're like dogs. Um, I was, I was going to say hyenas, but they're, they're, they're not, but they're, they're, they're running around and they, they, they do attack people. So, um, I'm trying to look up how to, how to defend yourself if, if you get attacked by one of these animals i but i forgot the name of it yeah yeah that sounds terrifying apples or oranges apples have you ever asked anybody for their autograph no what hap what do you think happens when we die uh nothing <laughs> nothing i mean okay go into nothing nothing yeah what's your favorite movie larry Oh, I have I have too many favorite movies, uh, but I, I certainly uh, love the Star Star Wars. Um, I keep go I keep going back to those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, favorite smell? Favorite smell would be uh, peppermint. Mm. 
And last one, you've got one song to listen to for the rest of your life. What is it? Oh, I, I, uh, I just stand by me. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Rapid fire. Really fascinating. Love the hot dogs. Um, obviously you're, you're here to, to, to inform us and educate us about, about rejection. And I was, I was thinking about it, uh, getting ready for today. And, um, there's just so many different ways I've been rejected, like being ghosted by uh, people, um, uh, not everybody who's saying they're coming to the webinar turning up, being turned down for a pitch process, overlooked for promotion. There's, there's so many different things. And um, they, they, when I think back to them, I kind of, yeah, it feels very painful, re really painful. So can you, can you tell us a little bit about like, why, it, why it's so painful or how, it, how does it happen? and uh, it to us physically and emotionally and why is it so painful larry well yeah let's you know i'm a psychologist but let me give you a very basic uh, lesson on neurology uh so if everybody would just put your fingers to to your spine and then have your spine keep run up your spine towards your head and then there's a point where your spine appears to disappear inside your cranium when you have reached that point just raise your hand and okay so that point is is the back of your brain and it's where the limbic system is located and within the limbic system there are there you have you have something the size of a walnut. It's called the amygdala. And you have an amygdala on the left side of your brain, and you have the, an amygdala on the right side of your brain. And <clears throat> the amygdala is, uh, although it's small, it is a very powerful and important part of your brain and all mammals' brains. Um, number one is it's constantly alert to danger. It never sleeps. Okay. Um, the second thing um, that about the amygdala is anything that has really been very negative, it stores in its memory bank so that when something similar happens, it, it Im immediately erupts. Finally, the amygdala thinks in in binary terms when i mean binary i'm thinking about zero one winner loser yes no survive die this that and when you re when you get rejected it stimulates your amygdala and your amygdala begins chirping the chirp sometimes turns into rumination uh, not, uh, according to one survey, 99% of the respondents have said that they have, they ruminate from time to time. And the 1% probably didn't read the question correctly. Okay. Uh, we all ruminate. And the rumination is coming from your amygdala. And it's saying, you failed. You got rejected. They didn't like you. They didn't like your product. You will fail. Another very subtle version of amygdala speaking in binary terms is the answer is it says, you could get fired. You could lose your job. You, you could be thrown out of your apartment because of non-payment and end up living on the street and desperate. That could happen. Now, when I say it might happen, it could happen, um, you you live in in, in what, uh, Alistair? What part of London do you live in? I'm in East London right now. Okay, so a plane taking off from Heathrow Airport could lose direction, could land on in your building in East London and kill you within the next five minutes. Isn't that correct? Uh, yeah. Technically, yeah, I can yeah. see one out the window. So yeah, you, 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 you've said technically correct. Yeah. So your your amygdala is the one who's saying this could happen, this might happen. 
what you your response was with your cerebral cortex, you said technically correct. Because the your cerebral cortex, however, can think in terms of probabilities. And so when I raised the question, yeah. could might it happen? The, the answer has to be yes, because you can't say it could never happen. Your cerebral cortex said technically yes. What it, that meant was the probability of that happening is so low, I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. And so that's the kind of dialogue that's going on with rejection. Your amygdala is flaring up and saying, danger, danger, you might get fired. You might not be able to support your children. You might be a loser. And your cerebral cortex fires back. Technically, you're correct. Thank you for the warning. But what's the probability that this loss is going to be the end of my career? Yeah. And that's... Okay. Yeah. Now, and then, here's, so, so, here, so here's, that, here, but here's yeah. what it means. Yeah. I said before, your amygdala never sleeps, but your cerebral cortex requires seven to nine hours of sleep. So if you are in a stressful situation or you're in a family situation where over the next three hours, you're getting six or less hours of sleep, your cerebral cortex is disabled. And, and may not be able to come back as quickly or as effectively as no, as usually possible. So part of the, your your reaction to rejection will have to do with your how good your sleep is. So if we if I'm better slept, am I able to handle rejection better? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and so I get the the I get the plane you know the the plane landing on my house example in the, in the workplace. You know, um, is uh, is is rejection at work um, uh, uh, less less potent than rejection of, of survival, or 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 can rejection in the workplace feel just as painful or just as damaging as 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 outside the workplace? I think I think it depends on the kind of industry that you're in. It 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 it's. Uh, uh, and for for salespeople, it depends on what 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 they're selling. If I'm if I'm selling um, fuller brushes and the, each brush is twenty nine dollars, uh, being rejected by by somebody for, on my brushes makes doesn't make a big deal. If I'm sure. selling a complicated technology system to a Fortune five hundred company that is three million dollars in billings that could be a hundred thousand dollars of revenue for me and put me over my target a rejection is yeah. going to be a big deal for me no totally and and then you know that's then in territory of you know not getting a promotion or you getting fired or whatever so i get that yeah. with a big ticket i saw your article on psychology today about reframing rejection and is that is that one of the the things that you you know, would would recommend about um, about how we can handle those rejections in work, uh, and if not, what, what, how do we build resilience? How can we build resilience as as sales? Okay, let me let me suggest a a a technique for talking to your amygdala that will help build resilience. So okay. first, I have to tell you a, a story. There was a psychologist who gave a a, a talk. Um, and a few days later, he gets a letter in the, in the mail. It says, you dirty, rotten, so-and-so, I'm going to come over and kill you and your family. He looks at the zip code of the letter, and it's the next zip code to his home. He goes to the police, and he says, I just got this threatening letter. What are you going to do? And the police said, nothing. We don't know who signed the letter. Um, Ninety. 99% of the people who write these crazy letters never actually follow through. So there's nothing we can do. Well, that doesn't satisfy him. So he he feels very stressed. He doesn't believe in guns, um, so he buys a baseball bat. And that night, his wife and his children go upstairs to sleep, and he sits down on the couch with a baseball bat between his legs, waiting for the intruder to come in. And of course, the intruder doesn't come in. Yeah. Next night, he does the same thing. He's, he, stand, he stays up all night with a baseball bat between his legs. 
Third night, same thing. Now, meantime, he hasn't slept in three days. He's, his brain is very foggy. The fourth night, he says the following things. Alistair, you are in a stressful situation, but you've been in more stressful situations in your life, and you have survived. Alistair, um, the police have said 99% of the times the people who write these letters never do anything. So you, have a, you only have a 1% chance of getting killed tonight. Alistair, two years from now, this is going to be a joke that you're going to be telling at a party. Go to bed. Yeah. And he went to bed. Next morning, he was very interested in why he was talking to himself in this way and why it was so effective. And so he called this term self-distancing. And he began doing research on self-distancing and how to, how to talk to yourself when you were rejected, how to talk to yourself when you're under stress. And he's published several articles on his research. And if anybody would like copies of the research, I'll be glad to send copies of the research. But it goes something like this. Your amygdala is chirping, Alistair, you could be fired. Alistair, you could miss your quota. Alistair, um, you, you could be thrown out of your house. Your wife will leave you. You will lose the respect of your peers. That's the amygdala talking. Again, it's talking in binary terms, could, might. Self-distancing is a, a technique where you start talking to yourself as though you were in the third, there's a, someone else in your brain, third person. I call it the little professor. Somebody who knows you very well, but who's impartial. Yep. And so addressing you in the third person, again, talking about the past, the present, the future. So, past. Alistair, you lost the sale. You may not make this month's quota. You know you're going to get some shit from your boss. You fear you might get fired. Alistair, yeah. you have been in more difficult, more threatening situations in the past. Remember this time and this time and this time, and you survived. Alistair, what's the probability that your boss will fire you because you, you missed your quota for this month? Is it zero? Is it 50%? Is it 90%? Alistair, mm. a year from now, you, have, you, you now have six months for the, for the remainder of the year to find another customer and get points. What's the probability you'll be able to do that? Alistair. Yeah. So I, I, it makes sense, Larry. It's almost like the way you described it, it was almost I was having a rational conversation, the person's having a rational conversation with their amygdala, right? In and, a very and, structured way. Yeah, in a structured way. And, uh, you know, those things all make sense to me. But, but in that moment, you think that that pitch that you, you know, you might lose or that deal you can't close, it feels like that is the be all and end all. And it's the most mm -hmm. important thing. Um, is there a reason why that that thing that you're kind of working on right now, or it feels like it's the whole world? It's, you know, because your commitment, uh, you, 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 you put a lot of yourself into this. Um, I, I, I'd like to, in the, in the, in the, in the psychology today piece that we wrote, and again, anybody who wants a copy of the piece, just send me an email. I'd be glad to give it to you. Uh, J.K. Rowland's manuscript, Harry Potter, was rejected by 12 publishers. Can you imagine that? Harry Potter was rejected 12 times before a publishing house. And actually, this was not a very well-known publishing house, finally accepted it. Now, Harry Potter, the value of the Harry Potter franchise is uh, somewhere around $7.7 .7 billion when, if, you, if you look at all the film rights and all that stuff. But she was rejected uh, 
12 times. Yeah. The family of Anne Frank, they were rejected 15 times for the diary of Anne Frank. Yeah. Um, Gone with the Wind, Margaret Mitchell's book had, was rejected 38 times. Yeah. Part of being an author, part of being an actor, part of being a salesperson is rejection. And d don't look at it as this is an anomaly. It's part of what you bought into when you went made a career in sales. Yeah. Okay. So, so I yeah, love that. And, and it's made me think of something else. So a lot of, a lot of people um, suggest, and we've, we've talked about it in the past, actively going to try and get rejected. So chase the no's, go and do it. Do, do you buy into that approach that, that by, by, by um, being more rejected, projected more often you kind of get thick skin what what is that true is that something we should be doing um i i, I do think that um there 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 is something in 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 cognitive behavior therapy where you actively try to precipitate the things that you fear and it does build up resistance so it's it's called exposure response prevention and that is you actually look to get rejected yeah and then experience it and say okay i survived okay i think one of the best ways to be more effective in dating other people is to get rejected and the more you get rejected the the better you're going you're going to be yeah so i would say okay. yes well, that, that's that's good because we've been kind of practicing that ourselves and pushing it. One of the questions that we've had in from people was, uh, was there an exercise that you could recommend that we could do every day to build your rejection muscle? Well, I would, I, again, I think the self-distancing technique yeah. would be a very important okay. thing to, to do. Yeah. I, I also would, would I want to go back to the to, 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 to the article because it it does talk about a, uh, a very specific thing that you could do. I uh, I, I, I mentioned somebody named Joe Sh Joseph Sugarman died. He had homes in Las Vegas and Maui. He owned a Ferrari. He owned a small plane. Uh, he made a lot of money. On the other hand, he invested in anti aging potions and a fifteen hundred dollar mouse trap. And so he had both successes and rejections. Towards the end of his life, he said, if you go out and do something and you're successful, hey, you won. But if you go out and do something and you failed, you, you learned something. That means you haven't lost. And the idea is that if you're rejected, have you learned something from it? Let me, let me, let me talk about myself. Yeah. Uh, my co a core th thing that my company sells is executive level outplacement or career management. Uh, we're hired by human resources. So I have spent years and years cultivating human resources and trying to sell into human resources. I mean, I've been president of the Human Resources Association. I write for HR people. I sell into HR people. And you know what? I usually get rejected. And it's been, it's extremely frustrating that that group that I'm most interested in partnering with is the group that's most likely to reject me. And then I stopped and I said, okay, what am I learning? Maybe what I'm learning is that HR are not my kind of people, that I'm not the right person. On the other hand, I find I relate very well to CEOs. They like what I have to say and HR doesn't. So I started not trying to network with a, with HR people anymore. I'm networking with CEOs, much more effective. Okay. So failure to me was a learning experience. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that that's fascinating. I think we're 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 at the end of our time now. Um, Larry, I'm absolutely going to go go and research the uh, exposure response prevention. Um, it was good to hear. Uh, the stuff about the uh, amygdala and the, the self-distancing and little professional are, are a real takeaway. My, my, let me suggest one more thing yeah, before we leave. 
And that is uh, just go on to YouTube.com and then Google Steve Jobs commencement. Um, Steve Jobs gave a commencement speech at Yale University that's been downloaded by like 38 million times. Yeah. It's the yeah. best commencement speech I ever heard. And in that talk, he talks about two rejections that were very critical and painful for him. One is he dropped out of college. He never completed his degree. And then second, he was fired as president of Apple. And again, he using the framework we've been talking about, it was initially extremely painful, but then he looked back on it and said, this was actually a very good learning opportunity and I would not have been as successful as I've become had it not been for those rejections. Yeah, I've seen some of it and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very good. So look, if anybody wants the links for that or any of the articles that we've talked about that Larry's written or um, they can reach out to me or Kieran or, or Larry on LinkedIn, or if you mm -hmm. want to know a bit more about um, any of the revenue coach products um, to build sustainable performance in sales, and you can just uh, you can just hook us up on on LinkedIn. Um, I'd just like to say thank you very much, Larry. It's been a, thank um, you for a, having a me, scintillating Alistair. half hour. Thanks very much. You've kicked off a new series for us, which is really exciting, right. and um, and I'm glad that we had uh, you know a, a, a good number of people um, tune in. We'll close out there. Thank you very much, Larry. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, ab absolute pleasure. Have a, have a great weekend and um, we'll pick up online. Bye-bye, okay. everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye-bye.